Right now, you're probably surrounded by a multitude of Wi-Fi, cell phone, and other electromagnetic signals. It's a new era of communication, but is it leaving some sensitive people with a range of medical problems? Claire Mawisa has the story. It's now 12 years since the last night that I was able to sleep next to my wife. Alvain and Audrey Livies from Somerset West cannot live a normal life because he is severely affected by electromagnetic radiation emitted by cell phone towers, Wi-Fi and mobile devices. For four years I lived on, on farms or rural areas where there's no radiation, away from my family, and it's now been six years that I'm uh, sleeping in my car every night. I'm driving all the way to, to Cape Point, uh, close to Smitsvinkel, and uh, where I sleep there next to the side of the road. This is the only way Alvin can escape the severe effects that especially cell phone towers and Wi-Fi have on him. The symptoms that Alvin experienced would range anything from um, ringing in the ears, nausea, uh, disorientation in a big way. Then he would get the tremendous headaches to such an extent that he would go and stick his head into a bucket of um, ice water. And then, of course, in extreme cases, he would get a total blackout. Alvain Livy suffers from a condition commonly known as EHS, or electromagnetic hypersensitivity, and it's a growing phenomenon the world over. Elsa Retief also suffers from EHS, and it has all but ruined her life. Elsa now spends most of her days in a space of two by one meters under a net lined with silver. It shields her from some radiation, but she still experiences constant pain, dizziness, and feels disorientated. When we visited her, she came out for a short period of time to talk to us. So how much time do you spend in your cage? I spend about 20 hours a day in my two square meter cage. It's affected every aspect of my life. I never see my friends anymore. Most of my family think that I'm just um, t telling tall tale stories because no one else recognizes it. Um, I never really see people anymore. I used to have a company. Um, I've lost my company, I've lost my car, I've lost my house. Her debilitating symptoms started two years ago and she is not alone. Increasingly, severe reactions to electromagnetic frequencies are being reported globally. New kinds of wireless technologies and devices have resulted in massive amounts of high and low frequency radiation everywhere in the environment. It is also known as electro smog and about 5 to 7% of the population is extraordinarily sensitive to it. Because symptoms vary from person to person and may be non-specific, many sufferers have experienced ridicule, not only from their friends and family, but also from medical practitioners. The, the medical world in South Africa, unfortunately, has not woken up to the crisis really yet, and they make it out as something psychological. Dr. Hema Kalan is a general practitioner who has done a lot of research on EHS and electromagnetic radiation. The reason it's not commonly recognized in the medical fraternity is that because we don't learn about it in medical schools, we don't learn about it at medical conferences, there isn't a physical test where we can do to prove that our patient has EHS. It is further difficult to diagnose it because the symptoms are very wide ranging. However, thousands of South Africans claim a link between their illnesses and electromagnetic radiation. And there are numerous groups, websites and Facebook pages that offer support. James Lech from Cape Town also suffers from EHS and has just completed a master's dissertation at Rhodes University on electromagnetic radiation in South Africa. He says the term EHS is inaccurate. I found EHS to be very misleading. Uh, a more accurate term is electromagnetic field intolerance syndrome. So that's EMFIS. Intolerance describes the condition a little better. And Lech has done groundbreaking work to prove that EHS is actually already a recognized medical syndrome. It has even been allocated ICD-10 codes. ICD-10 is an international classification of diseases coding system used by healthcare providers to classify all medical symptoms, diagnoses and procedures. EMFIS as a condition is described by a number of these codes. In a South African first, Lech has applied to be officially diagnosed with the syndrome. So I myself, uh, with the support of my wife, we actually had to go to High Court 
um, where I was officially diagnosed with having EMFIS. Based on this recognition, Lech was also the first to apply for and receive a disability grant from the government for this syndrome. This is some vindication for EHS sufferers who were not taken seriously in the past. So, if EHS is real, not only people with the syndrome should be concerned about radiation levels. All of us are subjected to it and it could be harmful even if we cannot detect it like EHS sufferers can. Every living organism on this planet is electrochemical in nature and we know that the electromagnetic fields interfere with human fields. A small percentage of the population pick this interference up and because they are intolerant to it, they then display EHS symptoms. And the interference of these electromagnetic fields is far from benign. There is overwhelming evidence that these electromagnetic fields are harmful to to humans. We know that electromagnetic fields cause oxidative stress and oxidative stress causes mitochondrial dysfunctions and DNA damage. And when you damage your DNA, you can have a whole array of symptoms ranging from autoimmune conditions, cancers, mood disorders. Electromagnetic fields are definitely harmful to human beings and people who have EHS are not crazy. Internationally, where EMFIS is recognized, there are also various regulations monitoring the intensity of the radiation with a view to protecting vulnerable groups like children or pregnant women against overexposure. In South Africa, unfortunately, there's not a single national standard for EMF radiation exposure. So there's no monitoring, there's no protection regulation, nothing. This is rather astounding because in many other countries, Wi-Fi is considered potentially so harmful that it has been banned from all schools. Dr. Kalan further says that the rapidly increasing flood of EHS sufferers worldwide should serve as a wake-up call to us all. We need to understand that these patients that are suffering from EHS are the canaries in the coal mine because they are warning us of what is happening and what we are doing to ourselves. There is no long-term study to prove the safety of Wi-Fi. We are experimenting on our population at the moment. A child's developing brain only stops developing at the age of 23, yet we're exposing the children at, with Wi-Fi at home, at school, cell phone towers, cell phones. In his study, Lech tried to create models for radiation for use by regulators. However, private companies flatly refused to share their data despite a legal obligation to do so. This is problematic as it could mean we are unknowingly being overexposed to radiation. Section 24 of the Constitution enshrines for every person the right to an environment that is not harmful to their health or well-being. However, it seems that South Africa's lack of clear regulation on electromagnetic frequency emissions could be eroding this basic human right, and this needs to be addressed urgently. And for the extremely sensitive like Alvain Livies, this cannot happen soon enough. Well, I I'll, I'll, I'll really would like to, to sleep in a bed again, put on pajamas like a normal person, go to bed, and when you wake up, you, you're in your house. That will be... That will be amazing for me.